Ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you to this educational video for the 650 volt silicon carbide MOSFET from Infineon. As Infineon Technologies offers three high voltage technologies, namely silicon, silicon carbide, and gallium nitride, the positioning is key for the commercial success of this line of products. Silicon is positioned as mainstream technology. It has a clear benefit with available portfolio and suitability across all power ranges. Silicon carbide is going to be available for higher voltage classes. Infineon is offering now 650 volt and 1200 volt devices, each of them targeting other applications. As represented in the slide, Infineon is even developing higher voltage classes in future. Due to the technological behavior, silicon carbide is especially targeting high power applications. In the domain of applications requiring high voltages, say above 1000 volt, like central PV, wind power, industrial machinery, high power motor drives, it is pretty settled in the market the usage of silicon IGPTs, for instance, and for silicon carbide used as enhancement of silicon for higher switching frequencies and efficiency. Conversely, considering the domain of low voltage applications benefiting for high frequencies like chargers, adapters or audio applications, the traditional silicon and gallium nitride for high density designs seem to have currently a hedge. Gallium nitride is focusing on the lower voltage from 100 volt to 600 volt in medium power, but highest switching frequency applications in order to increase power density to its maximum. In the area of 600 volt to 1000 volt, there is an overlap where the distinction among the three materials in applications like SMPS, residential inverters, UPS, electrical vehicles and EV charging becomes less clear. In this range, all three materials have a specific value proposition depending on the application requirements. Going to the nomenclature of the silicon carbide MOSFET, you can see that it is independent of the voltage class over our different divisions in Infineon. Silicon carbide MOSFET shows the typical RDS on at 18 volt and 25 degrees C centigrade in the naming while CoolMOS is offering the maximum value in its nomenclature. This diagram represents the normalized RDS on dependency over the junction temperature. On the X axis you can see the junction temperature and on the Y axis the normalized RDS on is visible. The green line correlates to the CoolMOS and the gray line to the CoolSick devices. Typically, customers are not that interested in the RDS on values at 25 degrees centigrade. In standard operation, the devices will be around 100 degrees C centigrade junction temperature. Under these circumstances, the RDS on at 100 degrees C centigrade is much smaller than the RDS on from CoolMOS. The multiplication factor from 25 degrees C centigrade to 100 degrees C centigrade, the RDS on is for CoolMOS 1.67 and for CoolSick 1.13. This results that in order to have the same conduction losses of CoolMOS and CoolSick, it is possible to design in a higher RDS on for CoolSick than for CoolMOS. Idealized, there is the potential that Cool 6 84 milliohm has the same conduction losses as a 57 milliohm CoolMOS at 100 degrees centigrade. This benefit not only reduces switching losses for Cool 6, but also gives an indirect possibility to have a cost down possibility for the customer. The next major benefit allows Cool 6 to settle in a topology which cannot be addressed with CoolMOS. The reverse recovery charge is one of the most important parameters for any resonant topology or any topology that is having a continuous hard commutation on a conducting body diode. 
Such topology is the CCM totem pole PFC. The QR is the charge which needs to be removed from the body diode after it is conducting. In the diagram, the QR is represented as area below the zero ampere line. Coolsick has 10 times lower charge than the best superjunction MOSFET with integrated fast body diode available in the market. Only due to this behavior, Coolsick has the possibility to achieve 99% peak efficiency in the PFC stage. For any resonant topology, this lowest QRR results in additional robustness if a hard commutation occurs. The output capacitance is a very important indicator with respect to switching speed and EMI behavior. In this diagram on the y-axis the drain source voltage and on the y-axis the output capacitance in picofarad is illustrated. Once again, the green straight line shows cool MOS and the gray straight line cool SICK, with nearly the same typical RDS on. Cool MOS is having much lower output capacitance at voltages above 50 volt drain source voltage. This indicates that cool MOS has the capability for reduced EOSS losses at higher bulk voltages. At low voltages below 50 volt drain source voltage, CoolSick is offering lower capacitances than CoolMOS and therefore representing a much more linear output capacitance behavior. The benefit for a higher output capacitance at higher voltages is directly interlinked with the ease of use in target applications and a direct indicator for the switching losses. A comparison in the same 3 kW LLC converter during startup is represented here. The marked waveform is the drain source voltage peak. It is clearly visible that due to the higher output capacitance, the cool SICK does not need to be manually slowed down via the external gate resistor in order to stay within the D rating guidelines of 80%. In order to have this D-rating guideline applied, it is needed to manually slow down the switching speed of the cool MOS with an external gate resistor of 47 ohm, while on the right hand side the external gate resistor for cool SICK is adjusted to 0 ohm, while still having more than 80% D-rating. This external gate resistor has a big impact on the switching losses during turn off, especially if the turn-off current is increased. As a result, cool SICK offers a much higher ease of use level with respect to voltage peaks. As already anticipated, cool SICK can be used in the high efficiency CCM totem pole BFC while cool MOS cannot. During the hard commutation on a conducting body diode, also the QOSS needs to be discharged accordingly leading to additional losses. In this case, the CoolSick offers around 75% lower QOSS at 400 V. This difference is coming from the linear output capacitance of CoolSick. Especially in the region smaller than 50 V drain source voltage, the CoolMOS has one or two order of magnitude higher COSS, resulting in a big step of the QOSS. The QOSS is also related in resonance topologies which define the current and time which is needed in order to achieve full CVS operation. There is one drawback for CoolSick related to the lower QOSS and the body diode which will be described in the following slide. As already visible in the QRR analysis, the body diode of CoolSick shows ruggedness never seen before in any silicon counterpart. Nevertheless, the forward voltage is around four times higher than the body diode of a cool MOS. This leads to the fact that if customers will use the cool SICK in a plug and place scenario without adapting or reducing the body diode conduction time, the body diode conduction losses will be four times higher at the same diode current. This can impact the light load efficiency in an LLC converter depending on the output power up to 
A very important point is also in order to achieve the highest possible peak efficiency in a CCM totem pole BFC, it is mandatory to boost via the channel and not the body diode. The diode conduction times of silicon carbide devices have been measured out of these diode losses have been calculated and implemented in the efficiency curves in order to get an estimation of the resulting efficiency in case optimized dead times were used. By optimizing the diode conduction time it is possible to have increased efficiency especially in light load operation. All devices are in zero voltage switching. The board has a minimum dead time of 200 nanoseconds. So a full optimization per device is not possible. This leads to long diode conduction times which will lead to efficiency measurements in a plug and place scenario resulting that all tested devices are within the measurement tolerance. Therefore, the body diode conduction time needs to be optimized for each technology in order to see the advantage of CoolSick. Last but not least, the 650 volt CoolSick portfolio is represented. As visible, Infineon is going to offer in the beginning four different Ardis on classes in two different packages. TO247 is the package which has the highest power dissipation capability due to the dimensioning and the thickness of the lead frame. In the first available devices, Infineon is focusing on high power server and telecom SMPS, especially for achieving efficiencies above 98% system efficiency. Other applications like solar, EV charging, UPS, energy storage, battery formation can be seen as upside potential. SIG MOSFET shows its best at high power operation but can also deliver very good performance in light load operation. To sum up everything, CoolMOS is a cost-effective solution for SMPS smaller than 97% efficiency. It is easy to drive, it has the most granular portfolio and a proven quality. CoolSIG is also a cost-effective solution for SMPS with greater than 97% efficiency. It is easy to drive and we are recommending a driving voltage with 18 volt. CoolSIG is especially for high power applications. It is the most suitable in any application where hard commutation on a conducting body diode is present or can occur. This brings me to the end. Thank you very much for listening and stay tuned for further portfolio extensions.